Welcome everyone. My name is Aditya Saman. I am a database specialist solutions architect here at AWS. And today we're going to talk about machine learning with Amazon Aurora, and we are going to do a quick demo of the sentiment analysis. Today's agenda, um, we are going to quickly go over um, what the machine learning with Aurora looks like, uh, and then we'll jump right into the sentiment analysis demo. So if you have tried to build a machine learning application to integrate with your relational database, typically it has a lot of manual steps and it has about six steps. So step one is to select and train the machine learning model. Step two is to write the application code to read the data from the database. Step three is to format the data from the machine learning model. Step four is to call a machine learning service to run the machine learning model on the formatted data. Step five would be to format the output. And then finally, step six is to load the application with this newly derived insights. So that's quite a long process. And typically, it ends up being offline in a data scientist's um, desktop or a laptop because it's hard to do all of the integration together. So the solution to this um, is Amazon Mach uh, Aurora Machine Learning. Uh, which is simple, optimized, and secure, and it integrates with uh, two of our machine learning stack services, which is SageMaker and Comprehend. Uh, for today's session, we're going to stick with Comprehend integration, and we're going to talk about sentiment analysis. So this integration of machine learning with Aurora actually takes from the six steps to three steps or even lower, which is just to select the machine learning model, um, in case of Comprehend, you don't even have to do that. Um, step two is to run a SQL query. And then step three is to use the results in the application. It is really that simple. So in today's demo, uh, we are going to go through the sentiment analysis and we're going to detect uh, negative and positive sentiments. Here's an example of such an application uh, where you have um, you know, review text inside your database, and then you simply run a select statement with uh, a inbuilt comprehend service function. And this function detects the sentiments and tells you if it's positive or negative. So before we get to the demo, let's see what we're going to achieve in this demo today. Um, first of all, there is no machine learning training required for this demo. Uh, we are going to configure identity access and management because that's always the first step when you try to do anything with AWS, you have to secure, you know, security is always the top priority. Um, and then we're going to invoke the Amazon Comprehend function um, and run SQL queries. For this, we're going to use built-in SQL queries, uh, which are AWS Comprehend Detect Sentiment and AWS Comprehend Detect Sentiment Confidence. And I'll show you what these two um, functions mean and how to use them. The steps in the demo are going to be to create a table um, and then execute these queries and functions, um, and then just look at the output and see how the sentiment was detected properly or not. All right, so let's get. Okay, so now we are in the RDS console. As you can see, the Aurora cluster is already spun up and ready to go. So step number one is to create the IAM policy and the role so that the Aurora service and machine learning services can talk together. So to do that, we are going to go down to the connectivity and security tab, and then scroll down to the area that's labeled manage IAM roles, select a service to connect to this cluster, and then from the dropdown, we're going to select IAM or Amazon Comprehend, and then click on connect service. We're going to click on the connect service button again. So now what's happening in the background is that a new role and policy is being created so that the Amazon Aurora and then the Comprehend service can talk to each other. When you create this initially, it goes into the pending mode and then eventually it's going to become active. It took a few seconds, but now the role is active. Uh, so what I wanna do is show you folks quickly what this role is doing in the backend. To do that, we're gonna go to the IAM console and look up this role name, click on the name, and then expand the policy that's attached to this role. So if you see, the policy does two things. It allows the Comprehend service, Detect Sentiment, and Batch Detect Sentiment APIs to be called on behalf of the RDS service. Uh, let's look at the trust relationship. 
Um, if you see right here, the other thing that this policy is doing or this role is doing um, is to allow the RDS service to talk to the comprehensive service. So those are the only two things this role is doing. Now let's move on to step two. Step two is to configure the parameter groups so that the appropriate IAM role is present in our parameters. So to do that, we are going to go to the configuration tab, scroll down, and then we are going to look at the cluster parameter group. We are going to click on the cluster parameter group, which opens it up in a next tab. In the parameter group, we are going to look at the comprehend parameter option um, or the comprehend parameters. Uh, a parameter group actually gives us ways to define specific ways um, that we can change behavior of the Aurora cluster from the default behavior. In this case, we are just going to change the comprehend uh, parameter so that it knows exactly which IAM role to use. So I'm just going to quickly look at the comprehend role parameter. The name of this parameter is AWS default comprehend role. So you can click on this parameter, click on edit parameter, and the value it's expecting is um, the IAM value of the role that we created. So we can quickly get that value from our IAM console. It's open right here. Um, you're going to have to look at the role ARM uh, and then copy the role ARM, and then just go back to our parameter and paste it, save changes, and you're good to go. Okay, so the first two steps were the configuration. Now comes the fun part, which is to run the actual commands and do the sentiment analysis and to see the results ourselves. First things first though, we need to make sure that our Aurora MySQL is running on the proper version. So we will do that by running the simple query and make sure that it's running the proper version. It is in this case, it's using 2.07.1. So if you're in two, on 2.07.1 or above, you should be able to use the machine learning integration with Aurora MySQL. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a database. You can create a new database or use one that you may already have. And then create a table um, to use for sentiment analysis demo. This table just has two columns, uh, comment ID and comment text. In your case, you may already have a database and already have a table that has comment values or values or, or text comments or text values that you want to do sentiment analysis on. You will use that one in your real world example. I'm going to insert a bunch of values here. Um, let's quickly examine these values. Some of these values are positive. Uh, for example, this one. This value says, this is very useful. Thank you for writing it. Obviously, a very positive comment. There are some comments that are negative. Uh, this value here says, I don't like how this, is, this was implemented, a negative comment. And then there are also some neutral comments that are not necessarily positive or negative. So for example, this value here says, an interesting write-up, please add more details. So as humans, we have intuition and we are able to understand what these comments mean. But uh, for a database or for a machine to understand this, it's, it's a little more difficult, especially for SQL databases or relational databases. You may be able to cobble together some full text queries and some complex query writing and function writing, uh, but it's not going to be very effective. So let's see how um, integration with Comprehend and machine learning stack can actually solve this problem for you. So to do that, we are going to use the built-in functions. These built-in functions are AWS Comprehend Detect Sentiment and AWS Comprehend Detect Sentiment Confidence. Um, so if you have used any Amazon machine learning stack services, you would know that when we do any sort of prediction, you have a result and then you have a confidence related to that result. The confidence level is where the algorithm is telling you how confident it is in the prediction that it has provided. So we get the, those same values here. Uh, I want to spend a quick minute here talking about this function itself. The function takes essentially three values. Uh, the first parameter the function take is the com takes is the comment text itself. Uh, you could be sending direct comments or you know text values, or you could be iterating through a, a table that's already that already exists. The second value is language. 
Uh, in this case, we are using English, but several other languages are also supported, like French, etc. Uh, and there is also a third value that I'm not showing here, but I'll get to in a second, uh, which is the size of the batch. By default, um, the comprehend functions try to batch as many as rows it, as it can. I think the current sweet spot is about 25. Um, so that it can send, uh, you know, lots of rows together and get good performance. So we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, having said that, let's run this function and let's run this query and see the results. So if you see the results here, you get two values. Um, first is the prediction of the sentiment, if it's positive, negative, or neutral. And then the second one is the confidence. Um, the, these are essentially the outputs of the functions that we pass the values to. So here's an example, a positive comment like this is very useful, thank you for writing it, has a sentiment value of positive and the confidence value of 99. That means the algorithm has a 99% confidence level that the prediction is correct. In case of a negative comp, uh, value here, I don't like how this was implemented, again, the sentiment is negative and the confidence level is 99%. Um, in case of some other um, comments that are not necessarily positive or negative, uh, here's an example. An interesting write-up, please add more details. So the algorithm thinks it's neutral and the confidence level is 51. So you can see that you can use the actual prediction and the confidence level together to make the output uh, a lot more effective. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about performance and the built-in performance enhancements um, that we have implemented to this algorithm. So let's look at the query plan for this uh, statement that we just passed, right? So we're gonna use explain for that. If you look at the explain query plan, um, you would see that under the extra column, you see batched machine learning, which means that we are batching uh, all of these comments for you. Like I talked about, the sweet spot right now is about 25, and this is done automatically for you. So to actually demonstrate the performance enhancement, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off batching, and then I'm going to also turn on batching again, and then we're gonna see the difference between the batched and the non-batched performances, right? So to turn the batching off, if you remember, we talked about the third parameter, which is the size of the batch. If I set the size of the batch to one, it's essentially sending one row at a time. Um, that means we're turning the batching off. So let me run the exact same query with batching turned off and then run the query again without any batch parameter, which means the batching will all automatically be turned on. And then look at the difference between the performance. And to look at the performance difference, we are going to use a performance schema. Okay, so let's take a look at the duration for the query that when we ran it for the first time. So first time when we ran this query, it ran in about 120 milliseconds or 119 milliseconds. As you can see that the batching was turned on. When we ran it again with the batching turned off with the batch size of one, you can see it took roughly 294 milliseconds or you know close to 300 milliseconds. So if you, if you look at that with the batching turned on, which is automatic and batching turned off, which is manual, you can do it if you wanted to, the difference between the exact same query um, is more than twice as long. So it is highly recommended that you batching turn, turn the batching on or you don't change the batching value. Um, and an overarching advice is to group as many rows together as possible. Um, this is the reason behind that is that um, you need you should be sending uh, as many rows as possible over the wire because it's much easier to group those values together and then get the prediction uh, just once and then send that prediction back on the wire as opposed to sending one row at a time or two rows at a time um, and that you know round trip becomes uh, exponentially expensive and your um, you know predictions are going to get slower. So again, um, the uh, advice is to turn the batching on and then try to group as many rows in the batch uh, as your um, algorithm supports. Again, in this case, which is our comprehend case, the algorithm 
supports 25. So we are automatically sending 25 rows in a batch for you. Okay, so that was the end of the demo. I hope you enjoyed it. To summarize, what we learned here today is how easily you can integrate Amazon Comprehend with Aurora. You can use built-in functions to do sentiment analysis and to enrich your relational data. You don't have to learn machine learning. You don't have to learn any new languages like Python or R. You can just use your familiar SQL language to achieve all of this. Um, and we also reviewed uh, how you can use batching for your advantage and for optimal performance. Um, with that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time and watching this video. I hope it was beneficial, and I'd like to wish you happy computing from all of us here at AWS.